Ready to go, Paul? Yeah. Ready? For our second honoree, Paula Goldstein, reminding us all to live in the moment. I've never seen a person that is so strong-willed as, as Paula. She has worked so hard to actually bite the bullet and say, we're looking for the miracle. And we're all praying for the miracle. And she's not going to give up. And I'm not going to give up for her. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. These are the names attributed to a disease of the nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord that control voluntary muscle movement. In ALS, nerve cells waste away or die and can no longer send messages to muscles. Paula Goldstein has ALS. I was died in March of 2010, um, although I think I had it two years prior. So I was working at the time and one of my friends came up to me and told me about this facility. So she brought me to the facility to look at meet some trainer. And I did. And it was the best thing I did. I think one reason I'm still mobile is from doing the exercises with you. I also think you know my body yeah. better well, than I and do. And my job is to get you to drink this what? great, drink, great uh, mixture of juice and, and thickening agent. Yeah. That's my most important job to keep you hydrated. It's terrible. <laughs> Paul, tell us a little bit about, you know, just coming to the program, coming to Fighting Back. How does it help you, help you deal on, a, on the mental aspect of just dealing with your disease? Uh, mentally, it's good because when I come here, I can see that I can still do things. Um, a lot of people at my stage aren't walking. I know it hits everybody differently, but it makes me feel normal. Someone who's been bugging you to write a book, I'm not sure who that is. There you go. So tell us a little bit about what you're writing about. Um, I'm really writing it for my family. Um, just a history going back to my grandparents, up to me, um, till the end about how I feel, how I was diagnosed. Um, I do have three children. Each of them have a 50% chance of getting this. So I'm hoping my book will help them understand what I went through. Your father died of ALS. Yes. You were there, so, I mean, that I always felt that had to make it extra difficult for you because now you've seen someone go through the disease and you've seen it progress. How has that affected your, your Well, journey? I was his caregiver at the time. My mother couldn't handle it. So I saw from beginning to end. But in one respect, it's good because I see the reality of it and there are no false hopes. Now you guys do a, a unique um, activity every year. You kind of have a group of friends over every year and your husband always gives a very inspiring speech. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, yes, she started two years ago after I was diagnosed on my birthday to have a celebration of life party. And we invite all our friends to come. We don't ask for gifts, we ask for 
contribution to ALS. The first year, my um, husband couldn't get through his speech. This year, my husband made it through the speech. And to me, it's the best present I could get. This is where we have our conversation. This is, where we, right, this is where we have our inspiring talks. Paul inspires me in my life. No. Yes, yes you do. We try to help each other, don't we? Right. What, what's our thing? We're trying to go out and find no ordinary moments, right? Right. No ordinary moments. Find that special moment each day. I've always believed in angels. Um, the things I've seen just growing up with myself or family. But I look at an angel like you're one of my angels. Well, oh, thank you. You're welcome. But you give me inspiration and you help me. Um, there are things in my family that you can't explain. And I attribute all that to people looking over us. Wendy's an angel because she's always there. My former boss, when she found out I was sick, we prayed together every work day in her office. And I think she helped bring religion back into my life. I try not to think about it. I try to live day to day and not project too far. But I have goals that I want to reach. Being this dinner is one of my goals, to be walking at that gym. That's great. Now I need something for uh, me. As Paul and Gary are coming up, I just want to say um, a few words. Each one of the recipients tonight gets a plaque. And I want to read you the inscription on the plaque. It says, in every man and woman's life, there comes a time of ultimate challenge a time when every resource we have is tested, a time when life seems unfair, a time when our faith, our values, our patience, our compassion, our ability to persist are all pushed to our limits and beyond. Some people use such tests as opportunity to become better people. Others allow these experiences of life to destroy them. Anthony Robbins. <laughs> This quote does not talk about how things are going to end up or turn out. It talks about now and what we are doing now when life is unfair. What we are doing now when our faith, our values, our patience are all pushed to the limits and beyond. Paula? You are faced with that reality every day and you keep fighting. Through the disappointments, the setbacks, the progress, and the success, you keep fighting. Through that fight, you have taught us how to live. I am honored to present you with this year's Achievement Award.